Good morning, guys, and welcome to my channel, Memoirs of an Empress, A Silver Lining. Today, I'm doing a special talk sermon called Don't Miss the Mark, Strengthen the Body. Don't Miss the Mark, Strengthen the Body. And I'm kind of, I want to keep it short because... I'm pressed for time this morning. And I also see I need to go into prayer because my phone is doing some jittery things. And I want to be able to at least accomplish part one of this talk. I probably will not get through the whole sermon, but I'm going to start. And I hope I can finish the whole sermon. But I kind of picked a time that was crunch time. So let us pray. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What time is it? What day is it? Well, it's about 7 o'clock a.m. And today is Wednesday. So happy Wednesday to you all over the nation. Happy Wednesday. Let us pray and then get right into this talk. This talk, this special sermon is about Love. The topic is do not miss the mark. Strengthen the body. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us pray. And on this channel, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, okay? So let's go, guys. Dearest Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, Most High God, we thank you this morning, God, for waking us up. We thank you, God, that we can praise you, that we can move our lips, that we have vision, that we have sight, God. We thank you that we woke up this morning, God, and we can open up our mouths. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, God, that we can go on today, Lord God, and help someone, God, as well as to encourage and to be encouraged, God. We come to you thanking you for this day. I ask that you help me to pour out, God, what you have given me in your word. Heavenly Father, I ask that you let it touch someone's lives, the lives of many, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you be with us as we come and as we go, God, today. That you be with our children, God. That you help us, God, to be grateful, God. That you help us not to complain, but to see there is good in all things. There is a silver lining in all things. God, if we look at it with our spiritual eyes, Lord God, that we will have an understanding. Lord God, I ask you to help us to love one another. Lord God, I ask you to help us to praise you, God. To put you first. To ask, what would Jesus do, God? Please bless us, Heavenly Father, from our heads to our feet, Lord God, and make a way out of no way, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Guys, I tried to make some light in here. And as I always say, do not look for perfection, but hear the word and apply it to your life as you see fit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me, I will be coming from John 13 verses 34 and 35. And let me read those for you. I cleaned my glasses, guys, so I hope this works. Okay. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one to another. And I want to stop there for a moment, okay? That was John 13, verse 35. And as I encourage everyone to get a paperback Bible, okay? Don't always rely on your phone. Go old school, which should be still new school. So I want to stop right there. Okay? And I want to jump. Well, let me just start by saying, I have heard 
of a saying people use. It's called church hurt. I was talking to a sister one day and I had just come out of a religion, the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was not baptized with this religion, but I had been studying with them for many years. And so I was speaking to this sister and she was explaining to me that many people have experienced this terminology that they called church hurt. Okay, I wasn't familiar with this terminology, but I understood what she was explaining to me. And when I took some time to ponder on this, I came up with, this is one way that Satan and the demons weaken the body of Christ. Okay, this thing called church hurt, what is it? I came to the realization that we who are in the body of Christ need to understand how important we are. We have to understand that there is a world out there hungry and thirsting and we are all important, so important. And a church cannot hurt us. God's temple cannot hurt us. A church is a building. It cannot hurt us. So the terminology church hurt, it is false. It is false. Now, we as sisters and brothers can hurt one another. But I want to read a scripture, okay? I want to read a scripture. And the scripture I will be reading is Colossians 3 verse 13. Please go there. Colossians 3 verse 13. And it says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. That's how God feels about it. We ought to keep putting up with one another. In fact, another scripture, or maybe the same scripture, but another Bible translates it. Continue putting up with one another because Christ does the same for us. How many times do we sin in a day? How many times do we fall short? How many times do we have sins of omission and commission? And we need God's mercy and grace. So who are we? Who are we? Who am I not to forgive? Especially me. I mean, if you're going to be one day, you know, in the fivefold ministry, the greatest calling of the earth, you have got to learn how to forgive. And you will be hurt. As I preached in my last sermon, yes, we will suffer. Trials and tribulations come across Judas's. We will be hurt. We will be betrayed. But we have to learn how to forgive. Now, let us jump to the scripture, Colossians, excuse me, Philippians, okay? Two, no, 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 I had got that one wrong. I'm sorry. I have to tell you what that one is right now. To Hebrews 10, verse 25. I apologize. Hebrews 10, verse 25. 25 and let me read that and that says okay not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching once again this bible is a little bit different and that's why we have to learn the word of God because when the when you know the word of God and you know what the scriptures say you know when they've been changed okay so what Hebrews 10 25 is saying we should not forsake the gathering of ourselves God tells us to gather to gather now he says do not forsake the gathering of yourselves he doesn't tell us where to gather, but we can conclude that church, that 
the house of God would be a place to gather. And I feel that we should gather with each other always, have dinner, have brunch. We need to be around each other so that we can encourage one another. We can sharpen one another. The body of Christ is a gift, a gift. Um, I have a small testimony about the body of Christ. When I was going through my storm, okay, um, I saw the great gift in the body of Christ because there were times that I know I wouldn't make it. But because I knew that I could go to my Bible study and I would see my sisters and brothers and they would always have a testimony, a smile, an encouraging word, a hand to hold, um, I would feel so uplifted. And that gift was priceless to me and I understood how the body worked, how our bodies, our nails, our fingers, our hands, our arms, our limbs, our wrists, everything is connected. And so... Glory to God. If the fingernail is hurting, then the finger probably hurts. Then the hand probably hurts. Hey, we have to strengthen the body and stop weakening the body. Now, I want to jump back. And I am so sorry for jumping all around the place. I want to jump back to John 3. Excuse me, 13. Verse 34. Okay. And I want to read 13 verse 34 again a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another I want to stop right there that is a commandment okay now a commandment is very different okay from me asking you to do something okay a commandment is a divine instruction, an injunction, a rule, okay? The difference from a request, a request is an invite. The difference, a, requ a request. Can you pass me that piece of tissue? Request. Pass me that piece of tissue. Command, okay? So God commanded us, okay? It is a command that we love one another. That we love one another. A new commandment that I give, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as God has loved us. So I want to start right there with scripture and I want to get into my talk. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay. Now, I want to say that the church, the building, has never hurt anyone. But we as people hurt each other all the time. And we do it because we are not perfect. Okay, and that's why God urges us to keep forgiving. Now, forgiving does not mean that you allow somebody to step on you and continuously stomp on you. But forgiving means that we think about the situation, and I don't care how harsh it is, we have to forgive. Because when you forgive, you help yourself too. You don't hold on to bitterness and to um, something that can eat you alive. Because when you don't forgive, it can eat you alive. So I have learned in my walk to forgive. There should be no reason that you are not going back into the house of God because you are hurt by anything or anyone. Because uh, God didn't do anything to us. You know, that is his house and we are welcome in his house. If we're going to run every time somebody offends us in the church, then we cannot say that we are down for God, that we are in alignment that we love God because if that is his house then nothing should move us unless something happens to the actual building and we have to move then we move as a unit as a family okay in fact when I was a little girl under the Reverend Ollie B Wells I remember my church had a fire and I remember we walked in the streets of Harlem from 145th Street between 7th and 8th Union Baptist Church and we walked the streets 
um, marching after the fire. And we were on 120 something street in just a building. And the building did not um, resemble our church, you know, but I felt as a little girl protected because the love was there. The body of Christ was there. So when I went in as a little girl, I embraced everyone and God was there. The presence, the Holy Spirit was there. And we did God enabled us to walk back into our church on 145th between 7th and 8th. And I remember the ribbon cut in and we walked into the church and it was glorious because God is faithful. Oh, I'm about to cry. I'm sorry. I, oh my gosh. I got so worked up. We're giving that testimony. Hallelujah, God. What are you speaking? There is power in the tongue. We have to remember what we speak becomes. Let us speak goodness over our lives and over the lives of others. How are you using your words? Are they for encouragement? Or are they hurting your sisters and your brothers? Church hurt should not hurt. There should not be any church hurt. The church didn't hurt us, but we can hurt one another. So let us get back to loving one another. Are we loving one another like Christ has loved us? All this preaching. I want to talk about that. All the preaching. Some of these preachers, oh my gosh, they are preaching and I mean they are on fire. But what about your actions? Do they say I am strengthening or weakening the body of Christ? We learn that it starts with us. Each one teach one. You can preach all day long. You can be all over Instagram, all over Facebook, traveling here and there preaching. But if you don't have love, if you don't love the body of Christ and the world, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him should never perish, but should have everlasting life. You have to learn to let your words align with your actions, okay? Or you miss the mark. You miss the mark. Do not weaken the body. Let us strengthen the body. Can someone preaching the word of God weaken the body? Yes. And I'm going to tell you if that is happening, it's a mighty blow. It's a mighty blow, okay? The body of Christ is not limited to one church. We are nationwide. We are connected. Yes, your church temple with you who reside in it. The body of Christ expands worldwide, okay? When I pray, I am praying for my sisters international, for my brothers across the states, across the waters that are going through warfare. I am praying and warring in the spirit that God do what only God can do. That God be God. That he do what only God can do. Because God is going to be God no matter what we do. And if he gives us a commandment and he tells us what to do, glory to God, then we have to do it. The body of Christ is not limited like God is not limited. You can't box in God. We have to stop weakening the body. If you are a part of the body, okay, it does not matter how small or big you are. If you are a part, you are important. God does not care about your disability limitations when it comes to the body of Christ because God tells us to build on strength. See, God, God's body, okay, is that glorious, that it doesn't matter if you can't walk. It doesn't matter if you can't uh, speak properly. It doesn't matter if you have a slurred speech or an impediment. Glory to God. It does not matter if you have something that you don't do as well as others. It doesn't matter if you can't read that well. It doesn't matter if you can't spell that well. It doesn't matter if uh, you can't. You know, you, you have a limitation. It does not matter. You know, limitations, that's, you know, we cope with those every day. But you are still as important to the body of Christ as somebody who has different limitations. Because we all have some sort of impairments, vision impairments, you know, all types of impairments. In fact, they're making up impairments in this world every day. 
Some that don't even exist. They're just making them up. Okay, that's another sermon. Okay, this talk is for the body of Christ. Stop weakening the body. Now, this is a very important part. Stop before you miss the mark. Okay? You could go to church on time. You could give your tithes. You can preach your best sermon. You can dance for the spirit. Dance in the spirit. Giving glory and praise to God. You can feed the poor on Tuesday. You can fast on Wednesday. You can uh, travel and uh, you know, travel to Africa and preach the gospel. You can open a pantry. You might put some money into a low income housing building. But if you are hurting your brothers and sisters worldwide, the next block, you are missing the mark. Don't miss the mark. To do all of that good and to get before the face of God and for him to say, away from me, you workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. Don't miss the mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Stop weakening the body. I'm not here to judge because God is the only one who can judge. There's no mediator between God in us except Jesus Christ. Yes, we have under shepherds. Yes, we have those elect, the fivefold ministry, my bishop, Curtis Bernard Sexton. Yes, guys, I am under a bishop, Curtis Bernard Sexton, and giving honor and glory to him because I forgot to do that before I started this. And all the fivefold ministry, the elders, Elder Victor, um, Austin and all my wonderful sisters, evangelists, missionaries, I respect and honor you. I love you. And of course, give it honor to God who was the head of my life. I am not here to judge. God is the only judge. I am simply pointing out that even the tiny of us need to be strengthened so that we can do our part to strengthen the body because we matter. See, we matter to God. God's body, big or small, we matter. In closing, God just brought something to my heart to tell you. Look at a little ant. A little ant is so tiny, but he is so intelligent. He's a worker. He carries his uh, food, you know, and he digs tunnels. And he's so tiny. It's like, where's the brain and the ant to know how to do this? And we, we are here all big in our bodies. And we find it hard to work together. But the ants work together. And I had brought my son an ant farm. It was amazing. And you can get ant farms off of Amazon. They're very nice. Some of my children said, yuck. But it was nice to watch these ants, uh, you know, work together. You can learn something. In closing, I would like to say, whatever you have been doing, let us put away everything not of God. Let us put away everything hurtful. Let us put away everything that's not encouraging. Ladies, stop gossiping. Thank you. If you can't help anybody, if what you have to say doesn't upbuild, then don't say it. Heavenly Father, let us pray. Let us heal. Let us be encouraged. Let us forgive. Let us speak positivity into the lives of others as well as ourselves, our families. Let us not get weary in well-doing. Let us continue to walk in the fullness of Christ Jesus. Let us walk in the finished works because God completed the work. We are walking in the finished works of God. These are completed works. God didn't stop when he was on the walk to Golgotha. God didn't stop when he took the opportunity to talk to his mother while carrying the cross. God didn't stop when they beat him, when they gave him those lashes. God didn't stop when they pierced him in his head with some type of stick and they made a, a, a tried to mock him as God, the King of Kings. God didn't stop when they gave him the vinegar 
Hallelujah, Jesus. God didn't stop when they stretched the wide. God did not stop when they put the nails in him. God did not stop when they put him on the cross. God, glory to God. We argue so much. Is it a stake? Was his hands this way? Was his hands that way? Was it a cross or a stake? They stretched him wide. They stretched him and they hurt our God. Glory to God. He did not stop. He kept on. He finished the work. He completed the work. What do I want to say today? Stop the nonsense. Stop doing what you are doing to weaken the body. Our God set the example. Jesus was the blueprint. Jesus was the illustration. He gave us a perfect blueprint. He gave us a perfect illustration. And in the ninth hour, he said, it is finished. He said, I give my Holy Spirit up. And he gave up the spirit. He gave up the ghost. He gave it up for sinners. He gave it up for imperfect people. He gave it up for us, no matter what. And we have to stop weakening the body of Christ. We have to be love. We have to stop with the gossip and the jealousy and the coveting and the hate and the gossiping and the clicks. In the hurtful speech, we have to stop with it. Be of sound mind. God saith, be a help. Love to one another. He commanded us to love one another as he loved us. And continue putting up with one another because he completed the work. Some religions want to say he's a prophet. He is Jesus. He is the word, the truth, the way, the way, the only way to salvation. You cannot get to the father without going through the son. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he is not on the cross suffering anymore. Glory to God. He is on the right hand. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God of the Father. And he knows all that is hidden. Nothing is hidden from God. He can come down. He can come to save us wherever we are. He is a God that looks low. He has not stopped looking low. He has not stopped coming to wherever he needs to come for his people. He will free his people from bondage. Glory to God. He will loose shackles. Glory to God. If somebody has our children in captivity, Lord God, God will go into the water. God has freed people who are in rivers. God can hear you if you're in a cave. God can get to you if you're in a grave. Hallelujah, Jesus. God did it on the cross when he was hurting. There was the first resurrection. I read it. It said the earth shook. And people came out of the grave. Hallelujah, Jesus. Stop weakening the body of Christ. Strengthen the body of Christ. And do not miss the mark. Well, God so loved the world. God loves you and you and you and you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to give thanks today to Reverend Burton, my cousin, who has a church. It used to be called New Jerusalem, 
and now I forgot the name and I apologize, cousin team. I want to thank her for being the first one to let me actually preach at her church. I preached a sermon called The Shift. And since I have uh, worked on that sermon and as ministers of the gospel, missionaries, evangelists, we work on our sermons and they get better and better. So I just want to thank you today, Cousin Reverend Ernestine Burton, for having me and for helping me and not looking at my limitations, but loving me past them. And I remember when I was preaching and she said, if she didn't know what she was talking about, cousin or not, I would get her down from there. But she made me feel so welcome. And today I bless the name of God. The reading of God's word is blessed. It's already blessed. It's already done. God has already completed the work. We have to stop making it so hard to walk in his finished works. He did the most already. He conquered the world. And he said, have no fear, for I have conquered this world. Oh, my mascara is burning my eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Be blessed, guys. This is my channel. Like, subscribe, and share. And love one another as Christ has loved you. Until next time. Peace, love, and light. Bye. Oh, and as we always say on my channel, there's a silver lining in everything. You have to just look at it with your spiritual eye. Oh. <sighs>